All right, as we continue talking about proving identities, I want to start off by telling you about this right here. Okay, At the end of the proof, you will start seeing me write this to signify that we're done. Okay, Because if you think about solving an equation, okay, when you have your variable solved for, there's one answer and you circle that. That's generally our indication in math that we're done. And that's the answer. Well, in a proof, we don't really have one answer, right? What we're showing is that this expression can look like this expression. So you just keep going until both sides are the same, right? And so there really isn't one answer to circle at the end there. You could rewrite both at the very end after you've shown your, your proof and then circle both of them and then put an equal sign and say this is an identity. and You could do all that. But at the end, and this is sort of a traditional sort of math um, notation, this is uh, QED is Latin for, and I don't have it in this textbook, so I'm just going on memory, so I apologize if I'm not exactly, I don't spell this right, but quad erat, okay, uh, demonstrandum. And what this literally means is um, that which was to be proven true. Okay, so that's what this means. Um, that which was to be proven true. Okay, so it's sort of, it's, it's sort of a, <clears throat> a Latin phrase that says, I am done my proof, there it is. There it is in completion. I'm done. Alright? So, You'll see me do that at the end, and I want you guys to do that at the end. Um, you know, your proof is not right or wrong based on that, uh, but I would like you to start kind of getting into the habit of not, you don't have to circle anything, because the whole proof is really your answer. So if you just circle the whole proof, well, just say QED at the end, okay? Quote, Eret Demonstrandum, that which was to be proven true, I'm done, okay? So that's just a little, a little tidbit at the beginning. Uh, if we go back to our suggestions and tips, okay, and strategies. I just want to review this really quick from the first, uh, from the first part of this lesson, okay? Uh, the, okay, let's start right here. Okay, to prove a trig identity, right? We talked about this. What we really want to do is separately prove, uh, separately, uh, I guess, and algebraically simplify both sides so that they are identical into identical expressions. We also want to, uh, as, as a tip here, start with a more complicated expression and make it simpler. And so if you have, this was the example, we have tan x over here, then we have 1 minus cos 2x divided by sine 2x. This is definitely more complicated, so let's, uh, let's simplify this one, right? So that's a tip. The other ones that we didn't spend a lot of time on just at the very end of class were this. All right, substitute known identities. Okay, that's a kind of a given. Here's one, though. If quadratics are present, okay, then the Pythagorean identity uh, or one of its ultimate forms could be used. So think about if there's a quadratic, if something is squared, right? If you've got a sine squared or something like that, think about those Pythagoras' uh, identities. Another one is if all else fails and you can't really see which way to go, start rewriting everything in terms of sine and cosine only. When you do that, you'll see that, hey, I might have a sine and a sine that could divide out. Or I could, I'll see sine divided by cos, and I know that's tan. Oh, okay, so things will start kind of making sense. So that's a good tip. Write everything in sine and cos only. And we're going to work on these two here now in this, in this second part, but multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of an expression. So sometimes we are going to multiply both the top and bottom of a rational by the conjugate, and usually by the conjugate of what's on the bottom, but sometimes what's on the top too. And what you'll see there is you're going to end up with a difference of squares. So a conjugate, if you're unclear or don't remember what a conjugate is, the conjugate is literally, uh, for a binomial, a conjugate would be the same first and last term, first and second term, with an opposite sign in the middle. So if we have like x plus 2, the conjugate would be x minus 2. If we had sine x plus cos x, the conjugate would be sine x minus cos x. 
same first and second terms, but different sign. And that's going to open up things, because that's going to give us a difference of squares. If you end up with sine squared minus cos squared, something like that, that might open up a few things for you. And then uh, another one here, factor to simplify expressions. So once you have common factors on the top, in the, in the numerator, and on the bottom, the denominator, if you divide those out, you're going to be able to simplify things quite a bit. Okay? And then the final one that we went over just before I gave you your assignment there was complete indicated operations. So that is, add expressions using a common denominator. That's another uh, good thing to do. Uh, you know, if nothing else is apparent, uh, add the common, uh, add with common denominators. So I'm going to do some examples of those right now. Okay. Okay. So... Here's one where we're going to multiply by the conjugate of a, of a binomial. And I've actually kind of got this worked out, so I'm going to erase all this, and then we're going to do it. Uh, so this is actually the, the given question. Is this uh, true right here? This expression over here and this one. Okay, so I'm going to erase all this. And, and we're, going to, we're going to do it over here, okay? So that's the original question. And um, we're going to... To do this now. So the question is, is this side the same as this side? Is this an identity? And multiplying by the conjugate, as I just mentioned, would be the same terms in a binomial with opposite sign. Okay, everybody got this written down? So which side's the more complicated? Well, it's kind of tough to tell, isn't it? It doesn't really matter. We could actually start on this side too. They're both pretty equally, I would say, complex. But let's do this just because that's... Uh, sort of the way I want to go today. So this is the conjugate. Now, I can't just stop right there because I've totally changed, you know, this. If I just multiply the bottom by something, that's a totally different thing now. So what you have to remember is that we're not actually trying to change the expression or change this. We're just trying to manipulate it. We're trying to show it a different way, right? And so if you multiply the numerator and the denominator by the exact same thing, you're not actually changing the value of that rational. You're just changing how it looks. Okay, so this is what we're going to get. If I multiply, um, well, if I multiply the bottoms together, let's just do the bottom first, we're going to get our difference of squares, which 1 times 1 is 1, right? And then we get negative cos x plus cos x. So those are gone. They cancel each other out. And then we have negative cos squared x. So minus cos squared x. And that's just simply, you know, that FOIL method, multiplying binomials, this is what you get. Alright, now, the reason why I started here, okay, the reason why I started down here is because this. When I multiply this out, I'm going to get something that is familiar, or something that you will recognize. 1 minus cos squared x. There is actually an identity that goes with that, right? So that's, that's good. Um, up here, okay... Up here, I'm not going to multiply this out. And if you go ahead and multiply this out, that's totally fine. But I'm going to keep this as separate factors. And why is that? Well, it's because, do you see what's happening over here? Look at this already. You're looking at the other side and you're saying, hey, 1 minus cos x. I have 1 minus cos x in its entirety over here. And so you think, maybe I'm not going to multiply this in because this is what I want to end up with. And this right here is actually something that I am eager to divide out. So I want to get rid of this, and I want to be left with this. So don't multiply this in like you might, uh, you know, in other circumstances. Just leave it as factored form, and then uh, this will kind of take sh start to sh take shape. Okay, so let's focus on the bottom. Is there a, an identity that that equals? 1 minus cos squared x, what does that equal? It equals sine squared x. That is true. So we have sine x on top. We have 1 minus cos x also as a factor in the numerator. And this actually equals sine squared x. So that's from your Pythagorean identities. Sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. And 1 minus cos squared equals sine squared. So we are taking advantage uh, of that. So that equals that. All right, we're very close now. Now I can um, look at my factors and I can kind of see that, hey, I've got 
sine times sine down here, and I've got a sine as a factor up there. And so if you look at this sine x as actually sine x times sine x, right, then I'm going to get rid of one of these factors. They're going to divide out to give me 1, and what I'm left with is 1 minus cos x over sine x. And that's identical to what the other side looks like. And so you're done your proof. Q, E, D. Done. Okay. Another example here is, we talked about this in one of our steps. Factor the expression and divide out common factors. Okay, That's something that we want to do for sure. And here's an example. And I think this is the first question in your uh, assignment that you're going to be given here today. You did number 11, right? No, number 7. You did number 7 already. And so I'm going to get you to do number 1. But let me go through number 1A here with you. And so here is the worked out solution. I'm going to erase this and we're going to do it from scratch. So you can always, if you're watching this video later, you can um, zip it back and make sure that we did this right. But I'm going to erase this bottom part. Okay. And what the question actually says in the book, it says, uh, um, factor and simplify each rational trigonometric expression. So we don't really know what we're trying to get it to be over here. We're just trying to simplify it. So this will become apparent. And I actually can tell you that I think what I just erased there is it should equal sine x. But just keep that kind of in mind. So factor to simplify. All right. So you look at the numerator. And what you should notice is that we have two terms. Here's one term. And here is a second term. Anything that's multiplied together is one single term. If it's separated by an addition or a subtraction, that means we have one term and then another term. Okay. The other thing you want to remember too is that this is sine x and this is sine x times cos x times cos x. See that? But the big thing is that you want to see that there is a greatest common factor between these two terms and it's sine x. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove the greatest common factor which is sine x and I'm going to write the expression that remains. So if you divide out a sine x from this term, you get 1. Okay, I'm taking a positive common factor out, so that remains as negative there, or a minus. If I divide out a sine x from this term, I get cos squared x. And that's the exact same identity that we just capitalized on um, sort of before. This, is, this is, should be looking familiar now. Okay. okay, so the next step would be, okay, how can I simplify this here now? Well, 1 minus cos squared, as I said, was sine squared. And so this right here becomes this right here. And then you can see pretty easily that this is going to divide out with this, right? And you're going to be left with sine. And so to completely simplify this, that's what you'd end up with, sine x, okay? So factor, use an identity where you can, and divide out. Now just, some of you may be thinking, okay? Some of you may be thinking, well, Mr. Maxwell, why did you change this one up here to sine squared x? Why didn't you change the sine squared x to 1 minus cos squared x? And you, you totally could have. So this is, the, this is the case where you can use different identities different ways, and you should still get the same answer. So really quickly, this would look like something like this, right? Sine x times 1 minus cos squared x. And then if you change this one down here, you'd have 1 minus cos squared x. And you'd still end up with the exact same answer as these would cancel out, see? And you're left with sine x as the answer. Okay? Good? Okay, so there's another tip, another sort of method. Uh, question number two in your assignment says use factoring to help prove each identity. Alright, so let's do another factoring one. Here is 2a. 